2017 brings the second refresh of the 5K iMac that has been extremely popular with content creators. If you're trying to decide between buying the latest model or a discounted late 2015, Apple Insider offers a closer look at how they compare. Externally, the iMacs are basically identical apart from replacing its two Thunderbolt 2 ports to next-gen Thunderbolt 3 with USB-C connector. Thunderbolt 3 is a huge step forward as it's not only twice as fast, but could be used for almost anything including a single 5K display or two UHD 10-bit screens. The 2015 iMac can technically support a 5K display, but it has to be a dual display port model that will take up both of your Thunderbolt 2 ports and even then it will only run a 8-bit color. Apple boasts a 43% brighter display, but unless your Mac is in a very bright room or battling glare, you likely won't need that extra brightness. Inside, the 5K iMac now features Intel's 7th generation KB Lake quad-core processors. Based on specs, the i7 model receives a 200MHz base clock speed increase and 300MHz boosting clock. That only tells part of the story, as under heavy CPU usage, the 2015 i7 iMac wouldn't boost at all, while the KB Lake i7 processor turbo boosts 200MHz. This not only offers an efficiency improvement due to an architecture upgrade, but also a 400MHz higher clock speed under full load. These improvements deliver 9% higher single core and 16% multi core in Geekbench 4 compared to last year's model. Along with this power increase comes added heat, and under extended 100% CPU load, the 2017 iMac starts to slow down to stay cool. For some reason, the fan now runs 150 RPM slower, which does make it quieter under load, but I'd prefer a louder but cooler running Mac. Even with a faster fan, the previous iMac ran hotter, with the CPU running 200MHz under its rated base clock, where the new KB Lake equipped Mac at least stays at its base clock speed. Thankfully, unless you transcode 4K video like we do, most programs including photo and video editing don't consistently max out your CPU, so this should be a non-issue. We edited multiple 4K videos and the computer never got hot enough to slow down, but it did get loud. The graphics received a major update featuring the latest energy efficient AMD Polaris chips, which are desktop grade instead of laptop chips. This results with a base Radeon Pro 570 being faster than even the best graphics available in the 2015 model. Many people complained about a stuttery interface with the previous base or mid-tier graphics, and that was likely because of the measly 2GB of video RAM which is mostly taken up by the 5K display. Anyone serious about creative work had to spend extra to get that 4GB graphics card, which they no longer do. Both of our machines have the best graphics offerings with the latest iMac featuring the 8GB Radeon Pro 580. Both Macs also have 32GB of RAM and ultra-fast SSDs. The 2017 model officially supports up to 64GB of RAM, where the previous one only shipped with 32GB, but did support 64 if you installed it yourself. Let's get into the benchmark, starting with the PCI SSD which received a boost in the update with 37% faster read and 75% faster write speeds. Cinebench R15, a 3D rendering benchmark, didn't see much CPU gains being only 8% faster but got 22% faster GPU scores. Unigen Heaven, a gaming benchmark, showed 52% faster graphics performance with the Radeon Pro 580. What was even more interesting is the Radeon 580 ran both cooler and quieter even after 3 consecutive runs proving the efficiency of the new 14 nanometer design. Playing Battlefield 1 and Doom at 1440p, which is perfect for the 5K's 2x scaling, the 580 averaged above 60fps where the M395X averaged 35 in Battlefield. The results were similar in Doom but with slightly lower frame rates. Gaming with the 2015 iMac requires dropping detail or resolution to get a smooth experience, both resulting in a big downgrade in graphics quality. Moving on to productivity, the 2017 iMac was 75% faster in the Final Cut benchmark Bruce X. In real-world video editing tests with Final Cut, our KB Lake all-in-one was between 45 and 80% faster, which makes a big difference in day-to-day -day work. Unfortunately, these impressive improvements don't translate to Premiere Pro, where we saw between 11 to 15% speed improvements. It's obvious that the hardware is capable, but Premiere Pro is less efficient and doesn't make use of the extra graphics power like Final Cut. For photographers, Lightroom only provided a minor improvement with 12% faster speeds, rendering and converting 15 edited RAW files to JPEG. If you're planning to edit video with Final Cut or spend time gaming, the 2017 KB Lake with Radeon Pro 580 takes a massive win over the previous model. It's definitely worth buying the new model over a used or refurbished one, and if you own a 2015 and make a living with Final Cut like I do, I believe it's worth selling and upgrading, especially since Macs hold their value so well. If you're a photographer or edit with Premiere, it's not really worth upgrading, but if you're comparing both models when buying, the 2017 is still a better value. 
especially since it now sells for $300 less in the best configuration with 32GB of RAM and 512 SSD. If you're working with Adobe programs and don't game, you can save some money and go with the mid-tier i7 model with 575 graphics since these programs don't make use of the extra GPU power but are more CPU limited. This configuration will outperform the best available options in 2015 with a $400 lower price tag. On top of that, you get the benefit and future proofing of Thunderbolt 3 with a brighter display and lower fan noise. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.